So this is, uh, this box is, has two nukes in it that were not overwintered. See, we lose some of them. I lose about 10% of my nukes. And so this box died out. And so we replaced it. We restocked this box with nukes from, uh, from other nukes in another bee yard. So on June 30th, we started these two nukes. And we gave them daughters of Breeder Queen 48. And that was sent. So 16 days later, I came back and the queens were laying. And I gave them their second box with foundation in it. Actually, I moved a comb out of the middle of this box against the divider and put a foundation in its slot and moved that comb, that comb of brood up to entice the bees to come up and work on the, on the foundation. Because sometimes bees don't see foundation above them as expansion room and they'll swarm. Even though there's foundation that they could draw, they don't see it as expansion room and they swarm and having that brood against the foundation just entices them to start drawing it out right off. So this, this colony was started on the 30th of June. The queen was checked on the 16th of July. Um, when I came back on the 25th of July, I didn't really like, like the strength of this one. So I gave it a frame of brood. Must be I took a frame of brood out of a strong one and gave it to this one. Then on the 15th of August, I took out the remainder of the foundation and gave it comb back. And 14 days later, two weeks later, they, that, everything, all the brood had started to hatch. They were feeling crowded, so there were cells with eggs, cups with eggs. So I removed a frame of brood and honey and gave, it, gave her a comb probably in about slot two right here so that she would start to lay in it. So that was... They're bearding outside right now. They're bearding outside on a cool day, which means they're absolutely packed with bees. I'll bet you the space between the inner cover and the outer cover is packed with bees also. So if I was worried about this colony, if we were on a good flow right now, I'd have to do something about this colony. I couldn't leave it like this because they'd swarm. But we're at the end of the flow now, and we're starting to get cooler nights. Uh, tomorrow night's supposed to be in the 40s. Uh, the goldenrod flow is going by, and so I don't expect there to be any more cups with eggs or any jelly uh, in this in this nuke. But you know, I can check it easily enough. All I have to do is tip up the the super. Right away, I, I, I'm weighing this. I'm picking up how much does this thing weigh. It's got some nice weight to it. This, this one is getting, this is heavier than the first one we looked at. So I'm looking underneath for cups with eggs. And sure enough, I see that they're starting something right here. And so here's, a, here's one. You see this cup with uh, jelly in it. This has got a, this is starting queen cells again. So that means I have to come back here and look at the ones that were, maybe that had queen cells started last time uh, or that have beards on them like this one does and rearrange these, readjust these. So this is gonna have to be uh, in the next couple days, I'll come back through and any of these, uh, to all my nuke yards, I've got about 10 nuke yards and I'll try to uh, look at the ones that have uh, beards and uh, try to adjust them. I may have to take away a frame of brood and give it to somebody and put an empty comb in, in the middle of her brood nest so she has somewhere to lay. And see if I can't uh, shut off this swarming impulse that they've got going now. But in order to do that, what I would do is I would tape the, the hole on the other side here so the queens can't go back and forth. And it's pretty tough to see queen cells when there's this many bees. So what you really need to do is shake the bees off, shake most of the bees off, and you can see where they're starting their queen cells. Now, you obviously want to know, did the colony swarm? If you cut the queen cells out and the colony's already swarmed, you just killed your colony because there's no queen. 
The fact that this thing has such a big beard and such a high population, obviously they didn't swarm. But they could supersede. And some colonies will kill the queen early in the supersedure when there's only queen cells this old. So how do you know? You look for a comb of brood like this one, where it's starting to emerge. See, this, this brood right in here is emerging. You see, you can sort of see the pattern, and it's, it's emerging out here like this. And you look in this newly emerged brood that's emerged within the last few hours and look for eggs. And sure enough, there are eggs in those cells. So I'm, I'm confident that this queen has not been replaced. They didn't supersede her. They're just, uh, they're getting ready to swarm. So I have to remove every one of these. Every queen cell has to be removed. If you leave as much as a cup with an egg, they'll probably go. And these guys may even start again now. So I don't have any queens, any combs with me right now. So I'll have to come back. It's just got an enormous amount of brood. And this, this queen, I mean, if you, if you can see that pattern in there, that the, the open brood pattern. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've got the light right. Mm -hmm. It's just an amazing pattern. She just she's a laying machine. These are these are hard queens to keep in the hives. They just they just fill everything up with brood. I mean, look. Mm -hmm. Right. That's I mean that's a fantastic queen. Couldn't ask really ask for much more. Except I wish there weren't any swarm cells, <laughs> so now I have to deal with this, this colony. Here's a comb of brood. So, you know, this is the frame of brood that I, uh, the empty comb that I put in there the other day when I came here and there were cups with eggs. And I added this comb and she didn't lay in it. They filled it up with nectar. So I'll probably move this out of the center of the brood nest and maybe move it to the outside and put her brood back in there and I'll come back here tomorrow with some combs, possibly take this frame of honey away from them and put, put back a, uh, a, an empty comb that, they can, that she can maybe lay in. So I just removed the queen cells. But that's only gonna buy me a little bit of time. I need to come back in here and maybe, uh, maybe remove this comb that's all nectar. And, uh, and give, him, give her an empty comb. And it, hopefully that'll take care of it this time. You know, it didn't, it didn't completely take care of it last time. When was that? The 29th? The 20th, 30 days, that's September, April, June, and November. 31 days. So that's two days, and today's the fourth. That's only six days ago. And they started it again. With the temperature dropping now, and we're, gonna, we're getting nights in the 40s and the goldenrod going by, hopefully I won't have to do this again. But it's something that requires persistence. So then I would get my duct tape and I would write on here, the same as this one, C slash E cups with eggs and whatever I did to it and the date, which that tells me that I need to come back here, standing the brick up like that. So I'll come back tomorrow and I'll look at anything that's got beards. I don't think I'll have to look at every hive. This is just a, they have such, so many resources here. This is such a great yard. Even though they're surrounded by some amount of corn, there must be just an awful lot of uh, nectar and pollen resources here for these bees because they just, they build up so well here which is one of the reasons I use it for my cell building yard because I want, I want a yard with a lot of resources. But you can see there's over 30 production colonies or cell building colonies here and 64 nucleus colonies that are, build, that, that are able to build up like this. It's pretty amazing what, what there is available for the bees.